Well, I am back once again, this time reviewing PSAs from Eastern Europe as per a request. Truth be told, this is a region of PSAs I have wanted to tap into for a while because there's some really obscure, underrated, yet scary stuff from this region. And we're going to be looking at a total of 35 of the scariest Eastern European PSAs. To give this show some variety, I'm going with the UN's definition of Eastern Europe. That being said, roll the intro. I figured I'd start with this one and carry on the tradition of starting off countdowns with a light-hearted or at least an unintentionally funny one. Guess you can say he missed the mark with how he interpreted his dad's directions to shoot the ball? Uh? Huh? Yeah, not quitting my day job. I apologize for that pun, but hey, I hit it with my best shot. Okay, I admit I jumped the gun on that one. Sure was a misfire. Okay, seriously, enough gun puns. Next PSA. Continuing with the light-hearted PSAs in the beginning, this is by far my favorite Czech PSA of all time, simply because of how darkly comedic, and also because the speedy funeral march music fucking slaps. It's not gory at all, and it doesn't need to be to push its message across. If you're going to speed, you're accepting that it has the risk to throw you into an early grave, in this case quite literally. Prędko 
dość, to główna przyczyna wypadków. Stop wariatom drogowym. This PSA isn't scary to me, just funny. The way the dude looks while he's running down the road making motor noises is just so goofy to me. And it's made even funnier when he skids and just ragdolls to the side of the road. I suppose it's a nice change of pace from the typical blood and gore fest Eastern European traffic PSAs can be. się około 400 tysięcy kolizji. Stop wariatom drogowym. Another PSA I personally find funny for the same reason I find skid funny. That face that dude that runs into the other man makes before they both fall down had me laughing out loud. Truth be told, both these PSAs are only on the list since their narrator has quite a menacing tone. Procent ofiar wszystkich wypadków to piesi. Stop wariatom drogowym. This is the only PSA in this entire trilogy I actually find creepy, since unlike drivers and skid, the speeding runner comes out of nowhere and it doesn't look goofy as hell. It's actually shocking. For once, a PSA in this series is actually well done. Uite, repara aragazul, dragă. Și nu e periculos? Deloc, draga mea. Trebuia să chemi un specialist. Lasă că știu eu ce fac. Da, da, am terminat. Nu ți asuma niciun risc. Siguranța nu e un joc de noroc. O campanie inițiată de Inspectoratul General pentru situații de urgență cu sprijinul EON România și Delgaz Grid. All right, enough with the light-hearted stuff. Now we're getting into the horror. First things first... The dad in the PSA pretty much exemplifies the too dumb to live trope, since, well, it should be obvious, but you should never attempt to do your own gas repairs, considering one wrong move can blow the house to smithereens. Leave it to the professionals, lest you turn your stove into a pipe bomb that can explode at any minute like this idiot did, though I doubt it'll happen as literally as it did in this PSA. In 2008, the global recession hit Hungary. Property prices plummeted and the real estate market ground to a halt. Many people lost a lot of money, yet the true cost was far greater. In 2010, there were 1.2 million Hungarians either completely homeless or living in conditions unfit for human habitation. As the local economy and subsequently the housing market began to pick up, we chose to remind those fortunate enough to be looking to upgrade their living conditions of the lingering cost of the housing crisis. We placed a number of properties on the largest real estate sites in the country, advertising some of the real estate that so many Hungarians still call home. When people searched for flats and houses, as for park benches, squats and slums appeared amongst their results. 
spacious open plan apartment ideal for nature lovers. Heating, blankets and newspapers, furnishing two mattresses. Unique one bedroom lodgings, easy access to city center. Condition, rustic. Parking, plentiful. 1.2 square meter open air bench located in district eight. Shared bathroom, bushes and kitchen nearby trash can. 24 hour exposure and cold. Not chosen by, but inflicted upon 1.2 million Hungarians. While viewing the ads, they could choose to share them with their friends on Facebook or donate directly to Habitat, which with the help of volunteers builds new houses and helps to cut the cycle of poverty. The classified ads received over 4 million views from almost half a million unique users, generating a huge amount of free media and widespread online coverage. Fans of our Facebook page tripled from a previously all foreign base, the new likes coming almost entirely from Hungarian profiles. Visitors spent twice as long on the homepage and donations to the charity increased. For zero budget in both production and media, we brought the plight of 1.2 million Hungarians to half a million Hungarian house hunters. Well, this PSA has a happy ending. The minimal horror in this PSA is shown in the ads that Habitat for Humanity set up on Hungarian house listing sites which show either benches or run-down apartments that look very grimy, to say the least. It shows the sheer desperation a lot of Hungarians were living in due to the 2008 recession, and it's quite sad to think about. And the Suf John Stevens track, Feudal Devices, gives it a hopeful but unnerving mood. Well, this is certainly a disconcerting and headline and cover image to be seeing while eating morning cake. Shame, too. That cake looks really good. But it's quickly ruined when the statistic that a whopping 15,000 children starve to death. Holy shit. My only issue with this PSA is how anyone could still have an appetite with this being the newspaper they read while eating breakfast. I know I certainly wouldn't like a side of starving children with my cake. Definitely darker than the last PSA we saw by this company. The sound design on this is quite good since, well, it's what's primarily used to convey its horror. And that sound of the heart monitor creeps me out quite a bit as it ever so slowly creeps up in the soundtrack. It's such an abrupt shift in tone from speeding on the road to being wheeled into the operating room and seemingly dying in the first person but it just makes the message of not speeding if you value your life hit that much harder.
the scariest anti-smoking PSA I've ever seen, but it's definitely the creepiest. Everything about the atmosphere of this PSA sends chills down my spine, especially with those creepy reverberated crows on the gravesite. It's such a simple PSA, and yet it still sends chills down my spine every time. The sound design is fucking immaculate, and it really adds to its chilling nature. Hmm. 
Vas-y, dame 2. This series of Russian train safety ads were probably my first exposure to Russian advertising, and while they range from silly and cartoony to incredibly graphic, the worst one being Train Surfers, which shows some pretty nasty injuries as a result of engaging in the activity of train surfing, which was a genuine problem in Russia at the time. As cartoony as they are, they are still quite gory for animated PSAs, especially when it comes to the ending, where no matter what, at least one of them has been maimed in some way. I do find them quite comedic though, as dark as they can get. Eat, teddy bear, eat. See what you've done! Don't look at me this way! Are you listening to me? Maybe you're dumb! Answer me, you idiot! Look what you've done to me! I don't love you. One of the sadder PSAs on this list, as this little girl is treating her teddy bear the exact same way she's been treated. And those sobs in the corner show she knows this isn't how she should be treated. It's terrible that any child should have to go through this, and there's no reason for any parent to treat their kid this way. Zdrówko! Rybka lubi pływać! Napij się! Daj jeszcze jeden browar! Truth be told, I never heard the phrase drinking like a fish before this PSA, but that's probably because America doesn't have the reputation for alcohol consumption that a lot of Eastern European countries, Poland included, do. The sudden dark tone when it's revealed the drinker died in some sort of fishing accident is quite chilling, but then the PSA encourages us us to rethink other funny sayings, which really screws with my head. După ce l-a legat bine, a luat două ace, l-a înfipt în ochi și în burtă. 
Mamă, și el țipa de durere! Și o ruga să mă moare, dar ea râdea. Să vezi cum îi tăia piciorul, cum tăia bunica mă lemne cu fierăstrău. Îi sărea sângere peste tot în cameră și el țipa și țipa și până la urmă piciorul a căzut pe podea. După el l-a tăiat și pal doilea, dar el nu se mai mișca și nici nu mai țipa, așa că m-am plictisit. Am luat telecomanda și am schimbat. Ai ascultat o sută de cuvinte. O singură imagine face cât o mie. Nu se abandona copilul în fața televizorului. O campanie a Consiliului Național al Audiovizualului finanțată de Uniunea Europeană. Și femeia în pielea goală a început să o zgârie cu o coasă pe fată mai tânără legată de picioare deasupra ei ca un liliac. La început picură puțin sânge, dar după ce a începat-o de mai multe ori, cugea și mai mult. Și la sfârșit, iată, ia gâtul de tot. Da, asta n-am văzut chiar bine ca apărut, mai că mea și am simțit televizorul să creadă că domnul. Ai ascultat o sută de cuvinte. O singură imagine face cât o mie. Nu se abandona copilul în fața televizorului. O campanie a Consiliului Național al Audiovizualului finanțată de Uniunea Europeană. It's not common I discuss a radio PSA, or in this case two on my channel, but after hearing these, I decided they were worth talking about. Now, admittedly, I find these types of PSAs silly most of the time, since, well, it's clear these kids would have sneak-watched these gory TV movies they're discussing anyway from how they talk, because, well, we all went through a phase where we sneak-watched stuff we weren't supposed to. In my case, it was Spongebob, The Simpsons, and Family Guy that I'd sneak-watch. But these two PSAs are rather disturbing with how much cadence the kids describe the violent things they've seen on TV in these movies. The context for this PSA is what warrants it being on this list. In 2014, Russia annexed Crimea, which internally displaced millions of Ukrainians residing within the peninsula that chose to leave rather than being under Russian rule. And while these Ukrainians were residing in their own nation, they were blamed for not defending the land they came from and inviting Russia to annex it and then cowardly fleeing instead of fighting. Truth be told, nobody wanted to be a par part of this war aside from Putin and his cronies in the Kremlin, and this PSA demonstrates it by showing a woman who views herself as unwanted a migrant despite being in her own nation. Я гей з Донецької області, я військовий, кілька років провів на фронті, я патріот. 
Звісно, мої побратими не знали, хто я. Ми воювали пліч-опліч, але навіть там, де смерть ближча, ніж на крок, я не міг бути собою. Я не зміг відкритися. Бо геї ж не можуть бути солдатами, бо геї теж вороги. Мій хлопець загинув на фронті, ми служили разом. Ваня віддав своє життя за нас, але так і не зміг розповісти нам про себе. Він віддав своє життя за тих, хто осиплений на нього прокльонами та ацькує. Він помер, аби жили ті люди, які його ненавидять. Навіть на війні, де ми могли щомить і вмерти, нам доводилося приховувати свої стосунки. Цікаво, чи є у вас е, така таємниця, заради якої краще вмерти, ніж розповісти її? У нас була. Частина мене зникла разом із ним, але я вирішив розповісти батькам, бо вони залишалися найріднішими людьми. І коли я розповів їм, мама була в шоці, вона кричала, що всі геї хворі, ненормальні люди. Вона казала, що це ганьба для сім'ї, син гей. І що краще б вона зробила аборт, і щоб я їхав до своїх геїв, тому що в неї вже нема сина. Тато сказав, що треба було більше бити мене в дитинстві, і може тоді б я не став геєм, щоб краще б я помер на війні. Виявилося, що навіть коли я воював з нашим спільним ворогом, я все одно залишався ворогом, навіть для тих людей, яких любив. Я й досі почуваюся, як на війні. Здається, що це ніколи не скінчиться. Я гей. Ті досі бувають геями. Геями, що за 68 років ніколи не казали цього вголос. До 40 років мене просто посадили б, якби дізналися, хто я. А в тюрмі, можливо, вбили б. Потім було вже не до того, жінка знала, що я завжди поруч. Діту були впевнені, що їхній тато найкращий у світі. Тому я мовчав. А тепер вже пізно щось говорити чи змінювати. У мене троє онуків. Я одружений, я зобов'язаний дружині до кінця життя. Скільки вже лишилося? Занадто пізно. Нічого не поробиш. Так, я упустив свій шанс на щастя. У мене й не було того шансу. Я ніколи не зможу розповісти людям, яких я люблю, дружині, моїм дітям, друзям, про те, хто я. Я так боюся їх розчарувати. Я потерплю ще. Коли я помру, про те, ким я є насправді, буде знати тільки та незнайома з ЛГБТ-спільноти, якій я зателефонував, аби хоч раз у житті вимовити правду про себе. Раніше всі знали, як треба і як не можна. Я швидко одружився, намагався змінитися, стати як усі, стати нормальним. Я дуже люблю свою сім'ю, людей, які ніколи мене не впізнають, але яких, заради яких я готовий віддати життя. Я й віддав проживши його як хтось інший. Я ніколи не знайду свого щастя, але я щасливий, що ви зможете зробити це за мене. Так, я лесбійка. А хто вам про це сказав? 
Усі, хто знають, мовчать. Ну, повинні мовчати. Бо хто його зна, що буде. А чи сказала вам, що я добра християнка? Це правда. Мої батьки знають мене як хорошу доньку, а церква як прочанку, яка пройшла по дорозі святого Якова. Коли я повернулася з подорожі, із церкви вигнали мою подругу. Теж лесбійку, що відкрилась на сповіді. Коли вона йшла останній раз із церкви, вони навіть не дивилися на неї. Наче її не існувало. Наче кілька останніх років братерства та сестринства у храмі просто примарилися. Але я їх не забула. Якось ми з батьком і мамою дивились новини. Мова йшла про двох лесбій, якщо живуть разом. Батько тоді сказав, що їх мало вбити. Я не відрагувала та пішла молитись. За нього, за себе, за усіх нас. Тому я постійно брешу. Я брешу мамі, коли називаю свою дівчинку подружкою. Я брешу татові, коли ховаю наші з неї фотографії та вигадую новий привід не пустити його в дім. Я весь час запам'ятовую, що говорю і кому. Складно. Але я звикла. Ми з моєю дівчиною – щаслива родина. Христос би пишався нами. Ми разом і в радості, і в лиху. У Біблії було не тільки про Содом і Гомору. Євангелій від Івана повчає нас. Любові немає страху. Досконала любов проганяє страх. Хто ж боїться, той не досконалий в любові. В моєму серці і Бог, і любов. Я лесбійка. Мене звати Даша. Я лесбійка. Я спортсменка. Але я маю обрати щось одне. Професійний спорт – це те, у що я вклала вже більш ніж 20 років свого життя. Віддала радісне дитинство та веселі роки студентства. Час із родиною та своє тіло. Це чоловічий спорт, тому від тебе очікують поразки. Навіть психологічної. Адже ти жінка. А я стала тренеркою. Готую інших до перемог та перемагаю разом із ними. Але це не вся правда. Ще є щось дуже особисте. Свобода бути собою та щастя мати сім'ю. Кар'єра чи особисте життя? Що би з цього обрали ви? Я починала в компанії дворових пацанів. Тепер я їжджу по всьому світу і змагаюся за Україну. Я хочу робити це далі, спорт – це і є я. Але чим більш відомою я стаю, тим важче. Тому я навіть не думаю про те, щоб перестати брехати. Це може миттєво зламати все моє життя. Спорт – це і є мій світ, і я не хочу іншого. В мене вже давно нікого немає. Останні стосунки закінчилися п'ять років тому. Тепер тільки спорт і тренування. Іноді я ходжу на побачення з відомими чоловіками, щоб нас сфотографували і ми промайнули в чиїхось сторіс. Я показую ці фото мамі, щоб її заспокоїти. Але завжди чую питання, коли чекати на онуків. Я мовчу, бо поки не розумію, чи зможу народити взагалі. Адже дитина має народитися в любові. Я лесбійка, я б хотіла відкритися, завжди краще бути чесною. Це, мабуть, неймовірно, коли ти не вдаєш. Мені навіть важко уявити, що таке можливо, що люди так живуть. Але в мене є робота, яку я люблю. Я знаю, що якщо я відкриюся, турніри і збори для мене назавжди залишаться в минулому. Тим більше, 
Мені ніколи не довірять тренувати дітей. А це те, що я б хотіла робити в майбутньому. Кажуть, головне – це бути собою. Я працюю вдвічі більше, щоб не думати про це. Привіт! Мене звуть Діма, і я трансчоловік. До 25 років мене звали Катя, але із самого дитинства я знав, що я хлопчик. І просто не розумів, чому у мене таке тіло. В 15 я дізнався, що я такий не один, і що перехід, можливість бути таким, яким я себе відчуваю, можливий. А до цього просто вважав, що я ненормальний. Я виріс і зробив перехід. Багато людей взагалі вважає, що таким, як я, не треба існувати, що ми – помилка, яку треба виправити. Коли зі мною знайомляться, зустрічають молодого чоловіка. І все добре, аж доки вони не бачать мій паспорт, і тоді питають, а що у тебе в трусах? Або кажуть, а дівкою ти був би краще. Або хочуть дати по обличчю. Або й одразу б'ють, доки вистачає сил. Або ще гірше – починають жаліти. Я роблю все, щоб не хворіти і звертатися до лікаря тільки, коли вже потрібна швидка. Я шукав сімейного лікаря і не зміг знайти. Один сказав, що мені треба лікуватися у психіатра, Нехай він не займається моєю пневмонією. Інша збрехала, що у неї немає місця. Третій просто говорить, що у нього немає часу, і він вважав, що таких, як я, не існує. Вони вважають, що я не людина, що моє життя не важливе. Мені часто доводиться розповідати свою історію, Начебто мої геніталії мають значення. На митниці в аеропорту, дорожній поліції, начальству на роботі, в лікарні, в супермаркеті. Загалом скрізь, де треба показувати документи. Щоразу я думаю, чи вистачить в мене сил дати відсіч. Ніби треба вибачатись чи виправдовуватись за те, хто я є. За те, що існую, я існую, хоча світ вважає це помилкою. Мені 49 років, і я лесбіянка. 20 лет назад моя мама заплатила охраннику завода, на котором тогда работала, чтобы он изнасиловал меня. Ну, чтобы я стала нормальной. Ничего не получилось, он был пьяный. Он открыл дверь маминым ключом, зашел и стал рассказывать мне, что сейчас произойдет. Говорил, это для моего же блага. Я пообещала ему, что все обязательно произойдет, только сходим в магазин за водкой. Пока мы шли в магазин, я сбежала. На следующий день она позвонила мне и отругала. Сказала, что я неблагодарная, что нанять этого человека стоило недешево, что я вообще не ценю мамину заботу. Еще сказала что было бы лучше, если бы я умерла. Я ответила, что умирать не планирую, а мама заявила, тебя посадят. Вот тогда и поговорим. Она считает себя нормальной. Я много думала о том, что она сделала и зачем она это сделала. Она же любила меня в детстве. Водила в парк, покупала сладкую вату на палочке. А когда я разбивала коленку, она обнимала меня и говорила, 
все будет хорошо. Мне почти 50 лет. Передайте маме. У меня все хорошо. The reason for this PSA existing is quite sad, that being the fact that according to 2020's global assessment of values, 44.8% of Ukrainians don't want to live next to representatives of the LGBT plus community. The idea behind this PSA campaign is incredibly ingenious, showing that in reality, most LGBT people don't live up to the stereotypes portrayed in the media and online cringe compilations. We're people just like anyone else. In fact, a lot of you viewers are part of this very community, wanting to lead a happy life as our truest selves. The, the stories in these PSAs are told by straight allies to protect the identities of the writers of these stories. What makes this PSA series so poignant and effective is how raw and emotional the people's real experiences with homophobia and, in one case, transphobia are told, and how they've forced themselves to accept this as their reality. It really makes me grateful to live in a place where my identity is not criminalized and demonized where I am free to be my proud, biromantic, gender-fluid self. This PSA has always sent chills down my spine. I remember first seeing it on one of Gabby the Clown's old countdowns, and it horrified me back then too. Going from an innocent game of hide and seek to a little girl pissing herself in fear that some form of abuse is coming towards her is such a jarring mood whiplash that comes out of fucking nowhere. But unfortunately, as the PSA states, for an abused child, this is indeed the case. Hide and seek isn't a game, but rather a means of survival. One of the saddest PSAs I've ever seen. 
From the beginning, it's clear that Dad is depressed and the only thing that cheers him up are his kids, which vanish into thin air. The accident isn't as violent as some other Ministry of Transport PSAs, though we do get a lovely shot of some bloodied dead kids. But it doesn't need to be super graphic and bloody in order to push the message that your children have a better chance at life in appropriate car seats for their ages. Also, the music used is hauntingly beautiful. Świadomy praw i obowiązków wynikających z założenia rodziny uroczyście oświadczam, że wstępuję w związek małżeński i przyrzekam lekceważyć obowiązki domowe, przepijać każdą pensję, znęcać się nad tobą, traktować jak szmatę, bić do utraty przytomności, kopać gdy upadniesz, ciągnąć za włosy po schodach, gwałcić, katować, maltretować i dusić. Gwałcić, katować, maltretować i dusić. Przemoc domowa odziera życie rodzinne z ciepła i poczucia bezpieczeństwa. Musisz się przed nią bronić. Pomoże ci w tym niebieska linia. Zadzwoń. I talked about this PSA last week in the domestic violence PSA's countdown. And well, it's still deserving of being on this list. Mostly because of the sheer venom the groom in the PSA's tone is dripping with, as he describes how horrible of a husband he'll be to his terrified bride. And I mean, this motherfucker gleefully states how he'll be a drunk bastard who wastes his money and punishes his wife for his poor financial decisions, and I've never seen someone with so much venom in his voice in a PSA before. Jedziesz za szybko. Jest ciemno i ślisko. Proszę cię, zwolnij. Zakręcie. Kierowca pana nie zauważył. Proszę pana, tam jedzie następny samochód. On się nie zatrzyma. Niech pan uważa. Ofiary wypadków. Nie widzisz ich. Nie mogą cię ostrzec. Użyj wyobraźni. Kampania realizowana przez Policję i Krajową Radę Bezpieczeństwa Ruchu Drogowego. Partnerem akcji jest PZU. Absolutely love the premise of this creepy PSA, instructing viewers to imagine people that died on the roads they're traveling in order to keep themselves safe. And they don't skimp on how graphically wounded the ghosts are, because of course they wouldn't when it comes to situations like these. Honestly, super creative premise for a PSA. I really love this one.
své přátele v jednom okamžiku. I nebezpečné předjíždění je jen okamžik. This PSA could have been much higher if it weren't so incredibly unrealistic and cheesy. The car shouldn't have randomly burst into flames, and while the faces melting and burning off are horrifying, it's kind of ruined by the stock screams. If I end up remaking my top 10 unintentionally funny PSAs countdown this year, which I probably will, this will be a prime candidate for that list. Don't get me wrong, the premise of this PSA is incredibly disturbing, as are the melting faces, hence why it's in the middle of the list, but it's executed in a rather gnarmy way. Like, this is Shadow the Hedgehog levels of edgy. A man zipping up his family in body bags as creepy ambient music plays in the background. Such a simple premise that sounds a little over the top on paper, but it's beautifully executed here. Haven't seen a better execution from Romania since the Ceausescu family met its end, and I didn't think I would before watching this PSA. For obvious reasons, this was a historical joke. A bit of a play on words on the term execution. But anyways, even if I've seen the insert accident doesn't have to kill you to take your life premise a million times, I've always enjoyed seeing it, this one probably being my favorite. I talked about this one before in my top 30 scariest European PSAs countdown, and to be honest, none of my opinions on it have changed since then. It's an incredibly eerie PSA with minimal sound aside from the seatbelt alarm and the guy's head smashing into the rearview mirror, both of which are really fucking loud sounds for some reason. It's one of those PSAs whose sheer minimalism makes it incredibly eerie. I think this might be one of the earliest texting and driving PSAs to date. I guess as long as texting has been a thing, there's been idiots doing it while driving, and given how cumbersome texting was in 2003, it probably took even more attention off the road than it does now. 
The PSA itself pulls no punches, taking the term personal identification number, or PIN, to the darkest extreme by having it be the number clipped onto a body's toe tag in the morgue. Jesus, the check really don't fuck around. Забегаю как-то утром к одному мужику, <как> а он орет. Бля, закройте двери, паучки расползаются, ловите их, убегут. И прыгаем по стенам, паучков собираем, пока всех не собрали не успокоились. А потом я говорю, пойдем кудяпликов настреляем, пожарим и съедим. А он орет, хочу, хочу кудяпликов. А я <как> говорю... Кто это? А там его жена стоит. Он говорит, это дьявол. Сейчас, говорит, его убью, а потом отметим это дело. Издалека долго течет река Волга. Встать, суд идет. Бухайте. Тогда я иду к вам. Well, this critter is definitely one of the most hideous PSA mascots I've ever seen and totally won't be haunting my fucking nightmares tonight. I still might draw him, though. Anyways, what makes this PSA so freaky, aside from the squirrel himself and his erratic behavior, is how utterly batshit insane the stuff he's saying is. None of what he's saying would make sense to anyone except besides a meth addict or a raging alcoholic, and he's threatening to kill his friend's wife since he sees the devil in her. But all of that doesn't compare to the nightmare feel generated when this thing mugs the camera and says he's coming for the viewer if the viewer gets wasted enough. And this was supposed to be funny by Russian standards? This is just horrifying! This PSA has some of the most graphic wounds in a PSA I've ever bore witness to. And because of the camera work not initially showing said imagery, it's a twist that's hard to see coming. Also, I love the way this PSA plays on the premise of a performance car photo shoot with hot girls to get this point across, since the people that think speeding is cool are usually teenage boys who view actual car salon presentations. Sure. Speeding in those fancy cars may get the ladies going initially, but you know where else it has the chance to get them going? Either the ICU or the morgue. Вторник тоже не
Не вопрос. Я вам скажу один секрет, кого люблю, того здесь нет. Ай на 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 I swear this PSA is the definitive Russian PSA. Dr drunk singers playing and singing Russian ballads, general drunken behavior, and a car accident that habits from your average Russian's hobby of choice, that being drinking. Surprisingly, this PSA would actually be pretty tame by Russian standards, since we don't see the accident itself, only the aftermath of it, which is still nothing to scoff at considering the wounds the driver ended up with. Also, the song being sung in this PSA slaps. is no joke. Two or three dead and hundreds injured every day in a country as small as this is no joke at all. Too many people in the car obscuring the driver's view is one of the most common causes of accidents. I couldn't make a countdown centered on Eastern European PSAs without including this one. It's by far the most famous Czech PSA of all time, and for good reason. It's an incredibly good bait and switch PSA that lives up to its name due to its ending, which involves everyone that's been piled into this car with all the shit fucking dying as soon as the car is turned on. Honestly, what is there to say about this PSA that hasn't already been said much better than I could ever put it? This is the Czech Republic's most iconic PSA in the community for a reason. Jeden pozdě, stihneme to? Neboj, šlápnu na to. Rozhodujte o životě jiných svou agresivní jízdou. Rocket Raccoon 19 described this as one of the most disgusting PSAs he's ever watched, and honestly, I couldn't agree more. 
As if this animated embryo itself wasn't creepy enough, we then see the poor thing get killed in a crash in one of the most violent ways I've ever seen in a PSA. Bro couldn't even have the slightest chance at life since them and their mother were both killed in this unseen crash. That's the really fucked up part about this PSA. This is a PSA that's messed with me mentally for a while, for the same reason TLC's Beastie Boy messed with me mentally. An unsupervised child on the internet seeing something he's absolutely got no business seeing, in this case, a fucking military execution, and he's about to be corrupted while looking ever so happy to do so. He doesn't look much older than 8, and he's sitting down with his big ass bag of chips, living his best life about to watch something incredibly gory on the internet. Though I found it wholesome that the cameraman wanted to protect the kid's innocence by asking him what he was doing at the site. Seriously parents, monitor your kids online before they see shit like this, or you know, become PSA obsessed furries like me. Not sure which is more of an incentive for you to keep an eye on your kids. Сбавь скорость. Тебя дождутся. I've never seen a car crash into another enough to flip, and yes, I counted this three times in the air. The true horror of this PSA is that we saw what I think are this couple's kids finding out their mom isn't coming home in the worst way possible. Although, are we not gonna talk about how, despite the fact that that sedan flipped three fucking times after its impact, only the front end had a lot of damage and only one person died from what we saw? Don't get me wrong, it's still fucked up and it's still horrifying, that's just a detail I noticed. Zrychlení z nuly na 100 za 5, 6. Dobrý, ne? Slušný, fakt slušný. 
Tak to teda ne. Když se za volantem nedokážete ovládat, nedokážete ani řídit. Dvojité proražení lepky, fraktura páteře na obrat lehce 5 a 6. Jste připraveni zaplatit i tuhle cenu? Nemyslíš? Zaplatíš. Konečně jsem koupil ty Seycheli. To bude paráda. Kanclu jsem za chvíli chodí. Tak to je fajn. Uhni s tím krávem. Budeme tam mít pronajatej celý barák. Dobrý, ne? <laughs> Agresivní rychlá jízda vám neumožní zastavit včas. Jste připraveni zaplatit i tuhle cenu? Tak dáme konečně no. brko, ne? No jasně. No. Jdeme. 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 Dobrý, co? Pace. Má grády. Marihuana výrazně sníží vaše řidičské schopnosti. Dejkej. Dej, Jste dej. připraveni zaplatit i tuhle cenu? Nemyslíš? Zaplatíš. Ceně jo! Slavni na to, ne? Vy to zvládneš! Pojď! No, pojď to dáme! No. Ej! Tak ještě jednou! No, ještě jednou, pojď, 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 pojď! pojď, 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 pojď. Ne, 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 nebo co je? Ne, že to slavni, ne? To zvládne! To zvládneš! Když si necháte mluvit do řízení, Snadno nad svým vozem ztratíte kontrolu. Jste připraveni zaplatit i tuhle cenu? Nemyslíš? Zaplatíš. Já vás vezmu! Ne, ty máš dost! Tak já to vezmu, měl jsem jenom dvě pivka. Alkohol výrazně zhorší váš odhad a zpomalí reakce. Já se na to nemůžu dívat. Jste připraveni zaplatit i tuhle cenu? Nemyslíš? Zaplatíš. Kde se ještíháme? Hlídání Honzika máme, veď? Jasně. Pokud se na zadním sedadle nepřipoutáte, Můžete zabít sebe i ty před sebou. Tak to je tvůj nový domov, Honzíku. Jste připraveni zaplatit i tuhle cenu? Nemyslíš? Zaplatíš. Neboj. Nechceš jít dát do sedačky? Hm? Teď je to skoro za rohem. Hm. Malá. Při srážce nemáte šanci dítě v rukou udržet. Jste připraveni zaplatit i tuhle cenu? Nemyslíš? Zaplatíš. This is by far the Ministry of Transport's most horrifying series of PSAs in my opinion. And never does anyone leave unscathed in these PSAs. The accidents in this series of PSAs rival TAC crashes, and we see people incarcerated, crippled, robbed of children, maimed, orphaned, and of course, killed as a result of reckless drivers in this series. By far, the last one is the worst, since it's implied a mother lost her baby because of her husband not buckling them into a seat, and she's gone insane as a result of it. Nobody thought in these PSAs, and not only did they pay as a result, a lot of them paid the ultimate price. And a few innocents also paid the ultimate price. Ти 
тебе повезло. Ты умер сразу. Не превышайте скорость. Не проезжайте на красный. Напрасный риск, разбитая жизнь. Is because it's a perpetual downward mood whiplash from the moment that Kamaz dump truck hits the sedan. It truly plays on a fate worse than death like no other PSA I've seen. The woman left broken hearted and crippled from this accident. And like most Russian PSA narrators, the narrator is incredibly menacing, speaking in a deep, matter of fact, monotone voice that sends chills down my spine. В этой жизни надо попробовать все. Наркотик точно так же держит крепко, затягивает навсегда. It doesn't get much more disturbing than a man hanging himself as a metaphor for drugs being played as darkly comedic, especially when it's so graphically depicted like it is here. Normally, the reason hanging kills people is because it snaps their necks, making their death quick and painless, but there are instances in which suffocation is the reason someone dies from hanging, most likely because the knot isn't tied enough to snap someone's neck, or they didn't drop themselves from a high enough velocity. So this man's death from his incredibly stupid stunt was likely very slow and painful since he couldn't escape the noose in time, and this is played for laughs as a metaphor for how drug addiction can take your life in such a slow, painful way. Fucking hell, this is brutal. Zgłasza pani, nie zgłasza pani, a czasu na loterii nie wygrałem. O, spokojnie, spokojnie. Etaty nam tu, no, człowiek nerwowy się robi. Słucham panią. Tak, chciałabym zgłosić pobicie. Mhm. Ponowne pobicie. Mój mąż pobił mnie już trzeci raz w tym roku. Mhm. Na dziecka oczach. Pani wie, że jak pani to zgłosi, to będzie poważna sprawa. Mąż tak sam z siebie bije. Poszkodowana zna skutki prawne, jakie niesie ze sobą to zawiadomienie. Zdaje pani sobie sprawę, że mąż prawdopodobnie zostanie osadzony w areszcie. Dziewczyno, i co ty sama bez niego będziesz robić? Z tą jedną pensją lichą? To jest jednak twój mąż przecież. Dzieci ojca kryminalistę będą miały? Teraz ludzie chcieliby życie mieć bezproblemowe. Ale każdy ma swój krzyż w życiu. W kościele przysięgałaś mu przecież. Nie będzie nam zachód mówił, jak mamy postępować. Konwencje, przepisy, donosy. Naszą konwencją jest polskość. Polska rodzina. Rodzina. 
pośle polscy politycy wrogiem konwencji stambulskiej? Przepraszam. No, to był ostatni raz, naprawdę, przysięgam, przysięgam. No spójrz na mnie, ale proszę Cię, spójrz na mnie. Nie niszczy teraz tego, co między nami jest. A bo ja wiem, co oni wyprawiają tam za ścianą? Pójdę tam, co mam powiedzieć. Sąsiedzi, nie bijcie się? Przecież to jest normalna akcja. Twarz sąsiadka niech zakryje. Pani spadła? Co takiego? Od 20 latach małżeństwo zaczęło nagle po budce przeszkadzać. Dlaczego? Jeżeli były już takie incydenty, po prostu się nie rozwiodła. Z wygody? Zostaw chłopie, nic już nie wyczytasz. Sprawa zamknięta, chłop ją zakatował, a potem zeskoczył z okna. Samobójstwo rozszerzone. I really wished I'd remembered this PSA existed when I was remaking my top 30 scariest domestic violence PSAs, since honestly, it's one of the few things that could come anywhere close to distress call in sheer terms of domestic violence centric horror. The injuries shown and the fate of the battered woman are indeed grotesque, but the true horror of this PSA in my opinion at least, lies in the indifference shown by everyone the woman interacts with to her plight as she tries to escape. If they're not rushing her or saying it's not their problem, they're blaming the victim. If they're not blaming the victim, the abuser keeps saying it won't happen again, which it obviously does up until he kills her and then takes his own life. By far, one of, if not the most brutal domestic violence PSA I've ever seen. I can see why Re-Ads and Rocket Raccoon 19 hold it in such high regard. And that, ladies, gentlemen, and fellow non-binary daisies is the end of another video. I held up my promise of stopping the remakes for a bit with this countdown, and this one was actually quite fun to do. If you liked the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and if you've done all those things, join my Discord server, link in the video and description, and if you've done all those things, y'all have a great day, Antonio out, peace.